Hey Libra, welcome to your <clears throat> December 2024 mid-month reading. We're just going to go ahead and jump straight in here and get started. You did pull this Mercury card that says messages. Well, Mercury right now in the astrology is retrograde. It does come direct though on the 15th with the full moon that is also happening. So there could definitely be something in regards to communication popping up for you. Uh, or, you know, Mercury just deals with the intellect and it does deal with just having, being able to better understand something and formulate new connections based upon new information that reveals itself. Whatever the information is, though, with this action card being here, I definitely feel it's going to give you a lot of clarity in regards to what's the best actions for you to take. Because Mercury does station direct as it trines Mars. And Leo. Now Mars and Leo is retrograde, but the trine there, there is a harmonious aspect to where, especially with Mercury coming direct, like stationing direct with the trine to Mars, you'll feel more confident because you're getting a better understanding here about what actions you could take based upon the newer connections that you're making or newer information that's going to reveal itself, especially with the full moon that will be happening uh, on the 15th as well in Gemini conjunct Jupiter. So yeah there's something you know come to come to light here and boom here you go you pulled the super moon card speaking of a full moon super moon this is definitely a super moon i mean if anything's with jupiter it's super because jupiter is a planet that does deal with expansion growth big things so let's see here now, this card does say emotions are running high. Oh, I would like to announce as well, I am running a sell. Before I jump, as I'm pulling your cards, I am running a sell on my personal readings. They are all 20% off. So if you're curious or interested in purchasing one, that link will be down below in the description. All right. Back to what I was saying, though. Okay, back to what I was saying. You did pull this card. It says emotions are running high. And, uh, well, that's just what a full moon will do in general. With Jupiter and with it being in Gemini, there's a lot of information, stimulation. Could be a bit of confusion, too, because this full moon will square Neptune. So, but, I, you know, the confusion, I feel, is going to come a little bit after the full moon. So, let's see here. Mm. What do we got here, Libra? Yeah, there's going to be some things I, I sense here that you're... Mm. Well, I'll break this down. You did pull the Seven of Swords here in your reading, but I don't get it's a negative Seven of Swords. Because even with the cards that I'm about to go through, like with, with what's surrounding it, I don't feel like it's a negative Seven of Swords. It's more so you're having to go back and look at something or you're having to come up with new strategies and new tactics for yourself uh, in regards to your situation. So that way you can fulfill your ambitions or get your objectives done here. Um, and that, that has a lot to do with Mercury retrograding and then coming direct. Um, so let's jump into your reading here. You did pull the devil, but the devil is in the position of the good stuff. So this is emphasizing you becoming just more disciplined here. The devil card, yes, it does deal with toxic, toxicity and negativity. However, it's in the position of the good stuff, which is more so going to bring out the archetype of Capricorn to where Capricorn deals with discipline, structure, right? Being tenacious and critical when it comes to your goals. So that way you can achieve. So that way you can achieve what it is that you're trying to create and build for yourself. So I do see a tightening up on things, more order, more control, and you feeling in control. And also more discipline here. That's allowing for you to make... Uh, progress towards your goals you have the moon card here it's also in the position of the good stuff here and i in this moon card literally i think it is bringing up symbolically the moon with the full moon that we're having to where i think this full moon in the position of the good stuff the moon card is bringing clarity because it's in gemini gemini does deal with clarity gives you information to be able to make new connections now, the confusion could come a little bit after that based upon the transits, but you're getting clarity here. Things are being revealed here for you. You pulled the tower here for your overall energy. 
well overall energy here for the rest of december uh is liberation i want to say with this tower and change but change that i i pick up it's a good change and I, I, sometimes i look at the the tower as it's it's literally the reset button in the tarot but I see this more as, as, as some type of change that's a reset or some type of liberation here for yourself. And it could be enlightenment as well. It's based upon something here that you're understanding more deeper and your questions here being answered. You pulled the eight of wands here. And give me one second really quick, y'all. My bad, y'all. I, I had to check to see if... I had to check to see... What, about something anyways you pulled the eight of wands here in your current energy yeah i think the eight of wands right now you're very confident in regards to hmm, i won't say you're very confident but i think you're starting to believe in the direction here uh, of where things are going for you with this eight of wands eight of wands is also the card of the height of ambition so you can be feeling a lot more ambitious a lot more positive and your mind hmm, very focused on growth at this time now, Eight of Wands also is travels and stuff like that as well. So there could be travels for you here. Like some of you could already be traveling right now. You have the Page of Pentacles here in your challenge. And then you have the Hierophant as your advice here. You know, Eight of Wands, it's a Sagittarius energy. And Sagittarius does with wisdom and learning. And the Hierophant is very connected to that as well. And the Eight of Wands is actually Mercury in Sag. And it's interesting. Interesting enough, that's where Mercury is retrograding right now. So the the mercury energy the mercurial energy and you pull the mercury card is definitely being highlighted so when it comes to your intellect your mind the way your you know when it comes to communication conversation your ability to be able to understand and solve problems figure things out i think you're becoming more confident with your with your process here because of the trine that's actually starting to happen now with Mercury trining Mars. And that trine exactly will be, uh, it won't come to an exact trine, but almost exact, but it'll be around the full moon. And then Mercury will come direct and then it'll come off of it. But yeah, and I think right now, what Spirit's really wanting you to do, uh, for one, I, I pick up here, Spirit's wanting you to believe in your process. Because the Page of Pentacles being here in the challenge, Page of Pentacles, it, it kind of reminds me of the archetype of Virgo. Um, because there's a lot of mutable energy here. And so Virgo is a mutable sign. Sagittarius is a mutable sign. One thing about Virgo, Virgo can be like the energy with the page of pentacles. Exactly. Could be, mm, it could be getting too caught up in the details or trying to be too perfectionistic. So I feel spirit say, saying here, like, don't worry about being too perfect, perfectionistic. It's going to drive you crazy. It, I'm telling you, especially with the, with this full moon, that's going to, square Neptune, the sun's going to square Neptune, and then we already have the Jupiter-Saturn square going on, right? All mutable energy, right? Mutable, mutable energy, it, it's, it, it, it's not really concrete, right? It's mutable. So it deals with flexibility. So I get here that your advice at this time is to be confident in yourself with this hair font, be confident in what it is that you know, right? You know enough here, so it really, it just, it, it really is just about taking what you've learned or going off of what you know here and starting to you can say practice your philosophy or just practically apply your knowledge without getting too caught up in it having to be perfection strive for perfection but if it doesn't turn out that way trust that it's not that big of a deal you have the seven of swords here like i said in the future position here of course i'm going to have to clarify this card but I do get here that, uh, so there's two different things here. I, yes, I know that the Seven of Swords deals with manipulation and all that stuff. That's something you really want to be aware of, though. I will say that, right? I definitely would watch your surroundings and your environment, especially when we come into the Sun Square Neptune, but with the full moon, that's also going to Square Neptune. So yeah, you want to be aware of that energy. I'm not going to sit here and be oblivious to it, right? Like You want to be aware of that energy. Uh, <clears throat> but I also pick up too with the Seven of Swords that Seven of Swords is Moon in Aquarius, so it's an Aquarius energy, and we already have an Aquarius theme going on because Venus is in Aquarius, and so there is this when it comes to groups and communities, it, it, the way in which we're cooperating and collaborating is becoming more group-minded, right? And it encourages us to be eclectic and open to different people's values, perspectives, 
and formulating your own opinion based upon those things without having any judgment. So I see you here really becoming very eclectic and, and, and actually being open-minded to a lot of different things. And I think it's gonna serve you well because, and I'm not saying that you don't already do this, but I think it's gonna serve you well because it's going to give you new, all types of newer information and perspectives that's gonna help you be able to formulate like your own unique thing here. And I also get two Seven of Swords throughout the month of December for the mid-month is I think that you're coming from a place of service. Seven of Swords, Moon in Aquarius is you're, get, you're getting your, the mind is more geared toward uh, 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 having a lot less of self and more, uh, it's becoming more group oriented, right? So that could be service, right? Helping being of service. You get what I'm saying? You have the, we'll clarify it. You have the Knight of Pentacles here in your out composition. I like the Knight of Pentacles because everything that you're preparing and everything that you're doing here, I do get with this Knight of Pentacles, the, 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 frame, the framework is being built. The ground work is being done. You're laying things brick by brick here and you're making solid concrete progress here and things are getting done. And this, which is why I think also with this devil card being in the position of the good stuff, the reason why is because the, the devil card being in the, in the position of the good stuff, not literally the fucking devil, right? But the archetype of the devil, which is Capricorn, which is being able to work long and hard on your goals and staying disciplined to those goals to be able to accomplish what you want. You did pull the chariot here in the position of something that you're unaware of, that you need to be aware of here. I think the chariot's saying here that Now, Jared, it's all about, just to make it very simple, because I don't really feel like there's a complex, deep message here. The chair just reminds you that you have free will here and that it's very important to remain in control of your destiny at this destiny at this time. And it's very important. And the reason why I say that is because even in the astrology, we have Mars retrograding and it's retrograding back to trine the North Node in Aries. Well, the, the ruling planet of Aries is Mars, the dispositor, or the dispositive Aries is Mars, and Mars is starting to make aspects of that North Node. So there is more of this self-expression that we're kind of tapping into and being more assertive and really taking direction and control of our destinies and moving more away from, you know, the over-reliance or the codependence on people, places, things to, to do it for us. It's like we're creating that, we're defining things here. So I feel the spirits just wanting you to stay in control and define your destiny. All right, I'm looking at, we're gonna pull some more cards here, but I'm looking at the, the transits here, but we will have that Jupiter square, Saturn. It's already going on now. And so Jupiter square, Jupiter square Saturn, Jupiter's retrograde, right? So it could feel like there's more obstacles or challenges or there's uh, limitations, more limitations than usual going on. And that just depends on your birth chart, obviously, and how that's affecting it. But, you know, Jupiter is in Gemini retrograde and square Saturn and Pisces, right? Saturn and Pisces is direct. Uh, and so for you, Libra, that's your 11th, or sorry, that's your 9th in your, um, in your 6th house. So you could be dealing with 6th house issues, schedule, routine, work. Just obstacles in general, because the sixth house rules are obstacles, and because uh, that Jupiter and Gemini in your ninth house is like you want to go out and explore, and you want to be able to, you know, fulfill your dharma, right? Fulfill your ambitions. But there's, or to venture out and explore, right, and to learn. But you could be very confused a little bit because it's the six house, the reality, like things about your, what's going on in your reality, immediate reality right now is having to be figured out. Clarify the, or not clarify, let's pull more cards. You pulled this, be authentic. Your way is the only way for you. And yeah, I, you don't have to copy anyone, Libra. I'm not saying you're copying anyone, right? But the seven of swords can be like that, that kind of, the shadow side can be copying. Right, but the, the light side of the Seven of Swords is, oh, I actually kind of like how that person does this, and I like how they do this, and I like how they do that. 
I'm going to take a little bit of that. I'm going to take a little bit of this. I'm going to take a little bit of that. Right? Then you formulate your own unique thing. But I would also say, too, that you're being encouraged to really become an individual and not be a follower. I'm not calling you a follower, but to like be okay, like be, be your own individual. You pulled this purification card here as a sunflower on it. I think you're becoming more happier. Things are being removed. Things are being dissolved right now that are acting as challenges and challenges and obstacles that are preventing you from really feeling expansive and happy. But I think there is a purification process happening to where you're releasing a lot of things. And because of that, I see you being able to be more happy. You pulled this expect powerful change here. This is a new moon eclipse card. Now we're not having any new moon eclipses, but I think there is a, just a powerful change for you here that's coming up. I feel like this is more predictive. Um, I think this is really in regards to What if it, mm, well, let's see here. We'll connect that here in a moment. I'll see what that is more specifically. Clarify the devil card here in your in the position of the good stuff. You pulled the nine of swords here. I feel you're getting control over your anxiety, right? Devil, nine of swords. You're getting control over your mind. Nine of swords, too, is the mind so dispersed. It's Mars and Gemini. I have Mars and Gemini. And the one thing with Mars and Gemini is we can become... We're, we, Gemini likes to multitask, but you throw Mars in there, it's like... We're trying to do everything all at once and then we get nothing done right or we can just be thinking about a lot of stuff that we want to do but nothing happens right or we get distracted or we just don't do it right but with the devil card is like no okay i'm i'm all the stuff that i'm thinking about i'm going to organize it you're being able to organize your mind i feel uh, and, and organize like what you're doing here uh, and it's allowing for you to be more productive but it's like you're getting control here over like your mind or you know stress clarify the tower for the overall energy you pulled the full card yeah it's liberation see i knew it i knew it uh it, it's very interesting too because the full is very much connected to the tower um, the full card is uranus which deals with liberation literally right it's when we're we break free from limitation right and obstacles and challenges so the obstacles and the challenges that you've been dealing with and that you probably could be still dealing with in December, everything that one by one, whatever it is that you're overcoming, it's going to eventually lead you to more freedom here and feeling like you're not, you know, shackled to obstacles. So I feel like this is a, uh, a, pivotal, a pivotal turning point happening for you. The Fool and the Tower are very connected because the Tower is Mars and Uranus. Mars and Uranus have a, an interesting relationship to where Uranus is always trying to innovate. So if you think about obstacles and challenges, well, what planet rules that? It's Saturn. Well, what planet, you know, goes against tradition? Saturn, right? So what planet goes against tradition? Tradition being Saturn. Well, it's Uranus, right? It's, it's radical. It's... It, it goes beyond the norm, right? So, but Mars, it's like some something has, action has to be taken. So that's why Uranus is like, okay, well, Uranus is like my right-hand man. Or Uranus is like Mars is my right-hand man. Like I use Mars, right, to, to bring about sudden change. Which is why Uranus is ruled with, and is connected to lightning. And what's hitting the tower? It's lightning. Because that's how fast Uranus happens, right? That's how fast Uranus can... Clarify the moon card here in the position of the good stuff. You pull the queen of swords here. Yeah, you know, the moon in astrology does represent the mind, right? People think it's Mercury. Mercury, yes, is part of the mind, but it's the intellectual process. It's the intellect. The moon being your, the way you view, you know, your subjective viewpoint of the world, which creates desire and opinions, which generates emotion, which tells you what you like and what you don't like. So one thing I see with the moon and the queen of swords in the position of the good stuff here is that, and it's also your, 
as long, like for instance like if your moon is being afflicted or if you have like bad moon energy or bad moon placement or whatever you could see the world as a threat a lot like oh i need to i need to avoid pain right that's all you're looking for is pain but if you have like a blessed prominent moon then you're able, you're able to synergize things and see things in the world in a beautiful way regardless of the situation so one thing i see happening for you in the position of the good stuff is instead of being so focused on negative like your mindset is starting to change to where you're seeing more positive uh, and you're starting to interpret things as more positive or see things as more positive clarify the eight of wands you pull the two of wands yeah two of wands is mars and aries <laughs> all right so I mean, you're very self-determined, bold. You have ambitious plans here, and that's what you're moving with. Clarify the Page of Pentacles and your challenge. You pull the Death card here. Let's clarify this Hierophant here. You pull the Wheel of Fortune. Mm. Yeah, Wheel of Fortune, the, the, the Hierophant is... I, I see this as trusting in divine timing. The Wheel of Fortune is also Jupiter. Right, so Jupiter deals with wisdom. It's also very connected to the Hierophant because the Hierophant deals with wisdom, your beliefs, your values, your morals, your principles, your virtues, right? And where's Jupiter right now? It's in your ninth house. Your, your, your ninth house of morals. Or the house, ninth house is the house of morality. So I think your advice now, your advice at this time going forward with the Wheel of Fortune is to exercise discernment by tapping into your higher mind and using your wisdom here. And not so much getting caught up in the little details of things, right? Um, or getting caught up into the little details about the material world that, you know, because they're not perfect, they, they could, you know, it, 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 can, it can create this energy of, it just makes you see the negative, right? You know what I'm trying to say? Clarify the Seven of Swords in the future position. You did pull the Three of Swords here. Hmm. I'm going to pull one more on this here for you, Libra. <clears throat> you pulled the Six of Cups here. You know, <clears throat> now some of you, I will say, in regards to relationships, what is going on with you? North Node, the first. In regards to relationships, hmm. I mean, obviously, this would be for some of you, you could be going through a breakup. I think this is already happening, though, because the death card's in the challenge. So this could be someone from your past here with the seven of swords, three of swords, and the six of cups here. But it's interesting. I don't have a lot of relationship cards. One thing that I get with this three of swords, six of cups is I think what you're doing here with the seven of swords is because the three of swords, six of cups would be the remembrance of a past memory or the remembrance of the past that caused heartbreak or, were you, or, or, or something that, that didn't go the way you expect or your expectations got let down. I think with the seven of swords being in the future position, you're, you could be reevaluating that situation here and looking at things, like I said earlier, from different perspectives and viewpoints, which is allowing for you to see the situation different. I want to say this to uh, Libra that I think also too when the three of swords can be like being the change that you want to see in the world and the three of swords can represent uh, to where you like I said you could be seeing the heart break out in the world and so you want to and you could be going through it too as well you could be get, right it's like you can relate and so you want to be someone who brings change right you want to be someone, be someone who brings six of cups that 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 brings people through transformation to help them evolve and grow. And I do feel with the seven of swords, you could be devoting yourself uh, in regards to service to do that. Clarify the knight of pentacles in the outcome position. You pulled the king of wands here. Yeah, I like your outcome here. One thing that I see like toward the end of the month is I, I get here that what the steps here that you're taking, the groundwork that you're laying, the framework that you're creating, 
I see things becoming prosperous. I see things like the quality of something here being built up. And I definitely feel like it could be in regards to your work and career and your uh, ambitions with this Knight of Pentacles and the King of Wands. King of Wands is also a card of success, so it's like obviously you're getting success. Um, but what you're what you're what you're creating and what you're building uh, is something here that's sticking, and I feel it will last. Clarify the chariot in the position of something you're unaware of that you need to be aware of. You pulled this Temperance card here, yeah, and the Temperance is especially with the death card being here in your challenge something to be aware of is just not taking things to the extremes it's really just or not staying in the extremes it's about f move forward with tapping into the like use your higher mind here uh and to look for positivity look for things that will bring in happiness and harmony here but also like the temperance is also creating it right it's like you're the, you're the you're creating that moving forward All right, I'm gonna pull you one more. You pull this elephant card, it says honor, empathy, responsibility, and it says cooperation. So, all right, Libra. So that's what I got for you in your December mid-month reading i appreciate you for watching if you want to book a personal reading with me that link will be down below of course in the description again the readings are on sale if you're new to the channel i encourage you to subscribe also hit the notification button bell as well uh, so that way you get notified whenever i uh, upload your videos otherwise than that i'm wishing you the best and i'll see you later bye Libra.